This is one of the 1938 Merry Melody cartoon series distributed by Warner Brothers named Jungle Jitters. In this cartoon, Africans are depicted as primal savages wearing tribal clothing and even using nose rings, which has its roots in the Berber and Beja people of Africa as a jump rope. The best way to sum this all up is basically What this is meant to show is the way in which black people are represented in this cartoon is racist, so thanks fine. But back to the video. In this cartoon, you can see characters varying in skin color and wearing rings around their neck. It used to be a tradition in many African tribes, such as the Nibli tribe of South Africa, for women to show status and beauty by having long necks coiled with rings and is still practiced today. The rings are not accurately represented, however, as you can see, the males are wearing them and serve as their actual neck, which can apparently be bounced if stretched out. This lively scene that's supposed to amuse its audience does quite the opposite for its modern day viewers due to its highly racist and stereotypical depictions of black people. So that's fun. Farther into the film, a salesman shows up at the gate and the people of the tribe take him in as lunch rather than the guest. He then has to marry the queen in order to stay alive, but on account of what she looks like, he would rather jump into a pot and be eaten. <laughs> I hope they all get an indigestion. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope. Portraying black people as wild, uncivilized, and cannibals, especially in a children's cartoon, is something that would not be the least bit accepted today. However, many cartoons similar to this have been created and enjoyed by adults and children. This was during the height of cartoons, which was called the Golden Age of Animation and spanned from 1928 to 1960s. Many of the exaggerated physical features of black people that were drawn in cartoons come from characters created for minstrel shows. Minstrel shows in America feature white performers that painted their face black traditionally with burnt cork. Their performances consisted of imitations of black slaves often dancing, singing, and telling stories. These shows first began during the end of the 18th century when performers imitated slaves for small crowds of people. Minstrel shows gained more popularity once Thomas Dartmouth, also known as Daddy Rice, started to perform his character Jim Crow with blackface on. By the mid-1800s, these racial performances became the mainstream form of entertainment. From then on, a show would usually consist of about five or four men sitting in a semicircle with a blackface and beaten up clothes. A performance ended with a big dance number called The Breakdown, where the audience would often join in and start shouting the song that would be playing. Minstrel shows were so popular as a result of the deeply held racist beliefs in American culture at the time. The performers mocked the way African Americans spoke, looked, and dressed. The minstrel performers tried to talk ghetto or act less educated in order to, in their eyes, accurately represent an African American. Now, to quiet people, Cotton Watts and Chick! Let that be a lesson to you. What's the matter with you boys shooting up that man's hen house? I'll shoot any chicken trying to follow me home. Well, why don't you get a job and go to work? Yeah, I almost had me a job this morning. Where? I went down to the post office and said that man couldn't let me have one of them jobs as a letter total. No, Cotton, you mean a mail carrier. And the man said for you to give me a situation, he'd have to put me through a simple self-examination. No, stupid. You mean a civil service examination. This comedy short gives off the message that Cotton, the man in blackface, is lazy, dumb, and socially improper. These types of negative stereotypes that are continuously repeated and joked about create a prejudice of all African Americans having the same traits as Cotton does in this video. Moving into the 1920s, otherwise known as the Jazz Age, big name companies in Hollywood such as Warner Brothers made use of the rapidly expanding entertainment industry. The introduction of sound into film attracted more people to watch what these producers were putting out. In 1929, the Warner Brothers wanted to start an animation company in New York and eventually bought cartoons from Disney animators in order to compete with the Disney Corporation. Under the leadership of Leon Schleitzinger, Looney Tunes were created as well as Merry Melodies. Merry Melodies created many racist cartoons, including Jungle Jitters, but at the time, being condescending towards African Americans was not viewed the same way as it is today. During the 1920s, the Ku Klux Klan were still performing lynchings in southern states, and the question of racial equality was not going to be adequately dealt with until the 50s with the Civil Rights Movement. 
From the 1920s to 1930s, the Jazz Age occurred as well as the Harlem Renaissance. Poetry, literature, and music reached new limits during this time period, with jazz musicians such as Duke Ellington appealing to both black and white audiences, but performing live, the audience would most likely be segregated. The spirit of the Harlem Renaissance is easily seen in the Merry Melody spinoff of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Hallelujah! <laughs> oh, honey child, what story would you like to have Mammy tell you tonight? I would like to hear about Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, Mammy. <laughs> well, once there was a mean old queen, and she lived in a gorgeous castle. And wasn't that old girl rich? <laughs> she was just as rich as she was mean. She had everything! Blackface Productions is including a few of the archetypes of black people, which come again from the menstrual shows. The most recognizable one is Aunt Mammy and is still used on food items today. Mammy is known to be a source of earthly wisdom and independent, but is also viewed as sexually undesirable, loud, obese, and violent. While the evil queen is not interpreted as having any of the good qualities in this video, she still has the main characteristics of Aunt Mammy. Mammy is seen as very kind to white children, especially the ones she takes care of as a maid, but is also seen as very cruel to her own children. Next is the Jezebel, which would be coal black in the video. During the menstrual era, women were usually a man dressed in female clothes, but in film, Jezebels were typically female mulattoes. The Jezebel is overly sexualized in order to be the complete opposite of a proper white woman. This character is known as being sexually promiscuous, which is seen in the cartoon when Cole Black is taken away by the bounty hunters, but leaves them all with kiss marks. Absentee, you pass it on, just pass it down to me. Easy. Okay, boys, set the body down easy. Boom. Well, thanks for the booby ride, you're so white, sweet. Anytime, Snow White. Well, all right. 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 And then proceeds to kiss all the seven dwarfs. Prince Charming, or Prince Chaman, as he is called, portrays the Zip Coon. This is an arrogant, flamboyant character. He dressed very nicely and always tries to speak properly, but sounds dumber than he intended. The next video, called Scrub Me Mama with a Boogie Beat, features Aunt Mammy and a Jezebel that serves as the protagonist. The town the cartoon takes place in is called Lazy Town, and it shows how lazy the characters are as the film goes on.
know where to wash clothes. What you all need is rhythm. What, 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 what do you all mean, rhythm? <laughs> I'll show you what I mean. In Harlem, there's a little place where everyone goes to see the way a washerwoman washes her clothes. If you like woogie woogie rhythm, she's got a bee. Let the woogie woogie washerwoman give you a treat. These are Piccaninis. They have big eyes, unkept hair, and red lips. You will sometimes also see them eating giant slices of watermelon. Piccaninis are thought to be the children of Aunt Mammy and are very poor. The girl here is a more accurate picture of what a Jezebel looked like due to her lighter complexion. These cartoons negatively shaped the way in which society viewed African Americans, but most, if not all, have been banned from television. The most famous of them are the Censored Eleven that were censored in 1968. Amongst these films are Hitting the Trail for Hallelujah, Sunday Go to Meeting Time, Clean Pastures, Uncle Tom's Bungalow, Jungle Jitters, The Isles of Pingo Pongo, All This and Rabbits Too, Cold Black and the Seven Dwarfs, Tin Pan Alley Cats, Angel Puss, which did not have an image, and Goldilocks and the Jive-In Bears. <laughs>